Well, good morning again, all you COVID-19 sufferers who are either locked up or locked out or whatever. Um, it's beginning to be a bit of a drag, but there's nothing we can do about it. We seem to have another outbreak. Some are calling it second wave and some are dodging that title. But whatever it is, we, we um, unfortunately seems to have migrated into the millennials. So if you're around the 35, 40 mark, look out guys. <laughs> um, us old codgers seem to be missing out at the moment, which is rather nice. But we'll see what happens. We've got to keep praying, we've got to keep believing, we've got to keep calling on God for mercy. Um, that's the important thing. All right, I want to talk to you about the fall of Jericho today. Uh, it's got some relevant bits in it that uh, are, are really suitable for our modern life, believe it or not. So, fall of Jericho, Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Now, Jericho was completely closed up because of the people of Israel. None went out, none came in. Sounds like COVID, doesn't it? And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given to your hand Jericho and its king and the mighty men of valor. Now, the, the details in, in chapter 6 are important to us since it sets forth, forth in, in graphic type the principles by which faith works. Now, in any Christian's life, there's a battle against the flesh. This, we know, can be a pitch battle which is not easily won. We have the Romans seven, 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 seven struggle. I washed my teeth last night, can't do a thing with them. We have the Romans seven struggle, verse 24, it says, Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? But with the resounding victory cry, verse 25, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then we have the principalities and power struggle of Ephesians 6 that seeks to undo us. But of course, it's not all struggle. We have the victory of faith. And faith's rule of action is to ascertain the will and the word of God. That's our first stop. Israel was in no doubt as to what this was. They had a word from God. Happy is the one who is certain that God has spoken to them. And I've heard people say in the past, God never speaks to me. Well, if you're a Christian, the moment you open your Bible, then the Holy Spirit can and will speak to you if you expect it. Here's a test scripture for us. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not, nor is he weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Is this God's will for me? Well, of course not. His will is that you stay in bed till lunchtime and then drag yourself out to the couch and watch the tully and moan and groan for the rest of the day. Romans, a joke, of course. Romans 12, 2. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Don't be conformed, be transformed. Don't do what all these other ducks do. Do something different. Follow God. Enjoy victory in your life. For goodness sake, 
We have all this stuff at hand. We have victory in our grasp. And some I see throwing it away, others apprehend it, take hold of it with both hands. Generally they're a nuisance to me because they're so spiritual. Yay! It's good to have spiritual people around, isn't it? Now, there's another scripture, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He has told man what is good and what does the Lord seek from you to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Faith hears the word God has spoken and counts the thing as good as done, giving glory to God in anticipation. Let, let's return to our text for a minute. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Now Jericho was completely closed up because of the people of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho and its king and the mighty men of valor. Verse 2 again. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, see, I have given to your hand Jericho and its king and the mighty men of valor. Joshua could have said, All I see is a couple of big walls with a heap of angry warriors on top waving swords. But that word, see, that one little word, that means so much, on which hangs so much. God had spoken. Now with the eye of faith, see. As this chapter unfolds, we find that at the sound of the shofar, they, they are to shout. So it was that the Israelites gave their mighty shout of victory before the walls of Jericho had actually fallen. There's, there's another key. Before the walls of Jericho had actually fallen. We're going to believe God before it happens. Crump. Down comes the walls. Faith's principles of action therefore cut right across those of natural reason. We can see four things about the procedure of faith in the conquest of Jericho. Number one is the apparent foolishness of it. Faith is often foolish. Believing in, in God is often foolish. It seems you're out on a limb, you've got no visible means of support, but the invisible, all-powerful God <clears throat> is there with us. As we're believing, we're receiving from God. Nothing could seem more useless to the natural either than the harmless wandering round and round the city uh, to the blowing of the shofar. So there's the inner wisdom of it. The apparent foolishness of it is the first one. The inner wisdom of it is number two. Inner wisdom. Nothing could, be real, could really be wiser than to do just what God himself had directed, however strange it might seem. Thirdly, the deeper meaning of it. Nothing could be more significant than the fact that we here we see God and man in cooperation for the pulling down of a satanic stronghold. And three, the absolute triumph of it. Nothing could be more marked because with one blow the city was laid low without a single Israelite casualty. Now, that's what the Bible tells us. You know, the musty old book full of fairy tales. I don't believe in fairies. And I know that the Bible is not a science book. But where it touches on science, it is always right. It's just that modern science can be a bit slow in catching up. The scientists mean well. So what about the archaeology of the site? Well, Jericho was once thought to be a Bible problem because of the disagreement between archaeology and the Bible. 
when all the time it was the interpretation of the archaeological facts that were wrong. One of the most famous archaeologists, a, a lady called Kathleen, Kathleen Kenyon, was, was not a believer. She said that the Egyptians destroyed the city. Had she been a little more careful, she would have known that there was a tablet from a collection called the Amana tablets, which was sent to the ruler of Egypt. This particular tablet stated that the Abir had destroyed Jericho and were raiding his lands. The Egyptians did not send a force against them, which is very un-Pharaoh-like. Your territory's been invaded, Pharaoh. Send the army! No, he didn't do that at all. He did nothing. Do you think maybe that they had not forgotten the pasting they got the last time they messed with Israel. The Egyptian Army Training Manual, page one. Don't mess with the Hebrews and always wear a life jacket. The unbiased archeological evidence supports the historical accuracy of the Bible account in every detail. There are many ideas as to how the walls of Jericho came down. Kathleen Kenyon found evidence of what she called earthquake activity at the time the city met its end. If God did use an earthquake to accomplish his purposes that day, it was a great miracle, probably greater than the one we asked for. Since it happened at precisely the right moment in the right place, as Israel shouted, Hebrews 11.30, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down. Secondly, it happened in such a way as to protect Rahab's house. It was common to build a house against a city wall. It saves a lot of masonry, you only have to use three walls. Modern archaeology has found such a section in Jericho that particular section of wall plus house was intact. Now there is no direct archaeological evidence to support it being Rahab's house. But there's none to deny it either. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. And by faith, Rahab's house stayed up. God honoured the promise of the spies to protect Rahab and her family because she helped Israel. Chapter 3 of Joshua tells us it was harvest at the time of the attack. Large quantities of grain were found in the ruins, which points to a quick defeat. We can also add that no invading army would ever leave grain in a defeated city, except for Israel, who were told not to plunder the city. As well as showing us how vital it is to not discount the Bible because of some apparent conflict with secular scholarship, Jericho is a wonderful example or spiritual lesson for God's people today. There are times when we find ourselves facing enormous walls that are impossible to break down by human strength. Situations that we get ourselves into or come upon us, whatever, enormous, powerful walls, full of nasty soldiers on top, just dying to get to us. But God has a better idea. And if we put our faith in God and follow his way, he will, according to Jeremiah 33, Three, perform great and mighty things and we will see victory in our lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you today. Lord God, for your word. We know that if we live by, by it, we can depend on it. So help us to be faithful walking in your ways. 
We pray for our Prime Minister. We know that he seeks you. He seeks after you diligently and your wisdom. So guide his decisions, I pray. Strengthen him, Lord, that he, he might face his opposition and face those that would speak against him. We also pray for our medical staff around the country. We pray you will keep them safe and help our researchers find a cure. And as always, we will be sure to give you the glory. Amen. <laughs> I was asked once why we end prayers with Amen and not a women. Well, it's pretty simple. Amen is a Hebrew word. And it means we agree. And I said to the person, we don't say a woman because I've never known a woman to agree. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's, that's somebody ringing in to want to ring my neck already. How's that sound? <laughs> so, we have a problem. There is a relaxation of the COVID rules. And we can meet again. Except we can't. We can't meet the distancing rules yet. So we will have to maintain camera ministry for a little while longer. So we have come up with an idea. There is a need for prayer. And listed below are emails and phone numbers that you can use to contact us. If you have a need or know of one, then please contact us. We need to know what you're doing, what's going on. So, okay. God bless you. Have a great week. Live it for Jesus.